I know. <laughs> what is this thing? <laughs> I, I guess I'm lucky enough to where I get I get a little bit of that you know, every time I teach something because uh, there's a there's a connection that happens there that I really enjoy. So uh, teaching animation is, is a lot of fun, and, um, and and having worked on Jimmy Neutron, I, I remember the first time I went to uh, I went to a museum. This was back when. The film had just come out, and um, and I was wearing my Jimmy Neutron crew jacket, which it was just cold that day. I just happened to wear it. I was in I was in Virginia, which I'm from Dallas, so this was a long way away. And then all of a sudden, uh, there was this tour of kids that was that was right there, and I was off looking at this painting, and this, all of a sudden one kid just goes, "Oh my God, it's Jimmy Neutron!" Of course, I'm not Jimmy Neutron. I mean, obviously, I'm not Jimmy Neutron. But, so. Uh, <laughs> So this was, it was just really cool, and all these kids came running up, and this was the first experience I'd ever had on anything even remotely close to that. And when I started talking to one of the kids, and one of their parents and mother was there, and she happened to tell me that um, her son, who was dealing with cerebral palsy at the time, that it was, it was his favorite show, and that uh, he just got me to sign something. That was my first autograph ever, and uh, I don't know, just kind of, Oh, it's, man, I'm tearing up thinking about this. I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, get the idea. It was fun. It was a really touching moment, and, uh, and it was very profound, and it was just a way to connect. And so that was really cool. And that's all. Awesome. Since we don't do voice acting work and, and have thing, lots of things that you guys have watched, um, most of our moments come when we're working uh, in interactive panels with you guys, when we do self-defense panels especially. Um, and one of the most touching moments for me, we were down in Dallas performing and we're doing a self-defense class and we get to the end of the class and we're signing autographs, letting people buy DVDs and things. And a gal that had been there the whole time uh, with this gigantic moose of a guy who had brought her in, um, the two of them came up to us after the panel and she had been a victim her whole life. She'd been in and out of the hospital from different men hurting her. And this guy that had drug her into this panel was, I've heard, well, he had heard about us and that we actually legitimately taught people things that could be useful to them and helpful in bad situations. And she was in tears at the end of the class about how much it meant to her to learn some things that could actually, it made her feel like she had an option in her own life and she'd never felt that way before. And that's, I mean, it, it's happened a few other times with people, but that was one of the most touching situations. And just being able to impact people's lives and help them feel like they have a choice, especially ladies. Um, in some of the cultures and places we go, um, we can get into negative situations. And one, the fact that she had a really good friend looking out for her, um, but two, just being able to talk to people, and we have made some fantastic friends and fans around the country, just being able to help people realize that they're not defenseless and that their life is their own to be able to control, and that just kind of makes the biggest impact for us. Someone throw a pie. Yes. 
Well, what, what if then, then we're hurting a pie, and then the pie community is going to get upset. So, okay, what about that right over there the, in the, on the end? Yes, ma'am. Oh, playing Death the Kid and Soul Eater, my favorite memory? Um, my favorite memory is actually kind of tied to the, the first time I heard about Soul Eater. So I didn't know what Soul Eater was. And so I was in a restaurant with uh, some people from Funimation and we're, we're having lunch and one of the, the marketing people is like, there's this show coming up that we're gonna work on, it's called Soul Eater. You should look at, uh, have you ever heard of it? And they go, oh no, it's, what's that about? And it's a cooking show about eating souls. No, um, and so they said, uh, they go, you should, look at, you should look at this character called Death the Kid. He's a skateboarder and da 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 da. It's like, oh, okay, good to know. And that, that was it, that, that was the last time I had ever heard of it. And so then auditions come along, and so then I'm like, I vaguely remember them saying I should read for Life the Girl. What was that role? Oh no, Death the Kid, that's what it was. Okay, let's see if he's in here. So I look, 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 and then, I, and then I'm going to look for it. And then when I go in for the audition, I do the audition. And so then, uh, you know, I get Death the Kid. Well, what the director told me afterwards, he goes, the minute I saw this show, and the minute I started watching Death the Kid, it comes in in episode three, he's like, the first person I thought of was Habercorn. And so it was fun to do that, to, to tie those two together, to where like, oh yeah, this is what he was talking about. And little did I know how cool that show was. The, the artwork is very cool, the action scenes are, are fun. You like Blackstar? No. 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 Who's your favorite? <laughs> Out of all the characters? Out of all the characters. Um, Subaki. I'm gonna ask you again, who's your favorite? <laughs> Thank you. Good answer. So, yeah. Let's see. Do you want to pick somebody for... Uh, I don't know. question about rumors. Uh, oh, uh, no, she was just asking me, like, what was it like to work on that show? Oh, Yeah. Where did you go just now? I have, I have, I have an amazing answer for a question that was not asked. <laughs> then go ahead and answer it. Um, with the, the Grell cosplayer in the no, back, I'm gonna regret this. <laughs> That's Kimber, right? I told you I'd remember your name because you're the only Kimber I've ever met. She was the only Kimber I ever met. There we go. It's good when husbands can connect. Wait, you've turned? <laughs> yeah, Tatum is my yeah. Tatum's my con husband, and Vic is my my con wife. <laughs> <laughs> what? What does that make Tatum and Vic? Um, In-laws. Yeah. <laughs> What's your... <coughs> Do you think all of you can share a story that, that's weird that involves um, an animal or an epic fail? <laughs> yes. I have a story. I'm going to go first. I, I have, okay, so an, an, a weird, awkward, funny animal story. Family friendly, DC. Family friendly. <laughs> Okay, so I, uh, how many of you here have heard me tell the octopus story? No. Awesome! <laughs> New audience for this story. Okay, so I was a kid, and when I was a kid, I actually had an octopus for a little while. Um, I, did, I had a friend who, like, had, his parents were filthy rich, and so he had this menagerie of the weirdest, coolest animals ever. And one of them is he had this octopus, this little octopus. His name was Chewy, short for Cthulhu, apparently. <laughs> Okay, so uh, octopi, octopodes, octopuses, whatever they're called, um, are super scary smart. Like they can, like if you, it's, it's common for you to give them like jars with lids on them to play with because they'll unscrew them and screw them on just to pass the time. Like they're super, super smart. Does he remember like he, every time you come in, he's like, oh, Tatum's here. Is it kind of like that? that? This okay. thing hated me. I, so my friend's name was Greg, and he was going away. His family were going to go away for much of the summer to travel in Europe or something. And so you know, the, so Chewy needed looking after. And I was 14. I didn't have a car or anything like that. So he's just well, let me just give it to you for the summer. So he set me up with this badass aquarium and, and all this food and all these instructions. He could change colors because they, they're the chameleons of sorts, you know, so they can take on different shapes and it's really weird. They're crazy alien creatures. And this thing, it was, I'm like, I, I have an octopus now. I have an octopus, that's amazing. My mom's like, that thing scares me. It's good that it's a fish, right? One of the things Greg warned me about was don't let him get out. 
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And I'm thinking, okay, that has to be a joke. He's a fish. Like, he's not gonna want to send the paw, excuse me. Um, I'm like, how's he gonna get out? So, I didn't know. I came home one afternoon after being gone all day, and he had gotten out. Uh-oh. The, he was out just kind of on this, this dresser, this credenza, and he was just kind of oozing across it. Well, he's not like, that smart then. Yeah. Not well, out of apparently water. they can survive oh, really? water okay. for quite some time before they're like, yeah, they're like, <gasps> you know, and they just go for it. Like, he was bored. Like, really smart animals, like, I'm bored, let's go adventuring. <laughs> and this thing, this, out of the water they look disgusting. Because they're like, <laughs> everywhere, there's water everywhere, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, what do I do with this? So I don't, my first instinct is to just kind of, you know, try to pick him up, and, and, you know, lift him and scoop him and put him back in the water, but he starts clinging to my arm every time I try to drop him back in the water, and he won't, I'm like, trying to get out, oh, come on, get out, he, he's like, nope, 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 this is where I want to be, put me back, I put him back down on the wood, he let go. So I'm like, how the hell? I mean, I'm like, I don't know how long he can survive. I think, is he, is he, is he, is he done? Is he, does he miss Greg so much? He's like, no! Like, I mean, what's gonna happen? So I'm like, this thing's an expensive creature. I can't afford to, to replace it. So my instinct is to run into the kitchen and get a huge mixing bowl of my mom's, she still doesn't know I did this, fill it with water from the aquarium, and just kind of like, hey, Chewie, <laughs> scoop him into it, and then pour him in to, to the thing. Well, so he changes colors depending on his mood, apparently. I had this whole color chart, and apparently deep blue, like deep royal blue, was his pissed off color. So he's like gray and black and all this, and I'm like, ah, oh, really blue, as if to say, son of a, you know. So thereafter, I, now the thing is, he grabbed a pencil off of the desk as I was scooping him into the bowl. I never got that pencil back. He kept it. It was floating in the tank with him, like in the bottom of the tank, and every time I opened it up to feed him or something, he'd be like, nope. Like I half expected to have to, like, to wake up in the middle of the night with him tapping on the glass with it looking at me. So yeah, this happened. This happened. Was just in this thing and he would watch me. He did not like me. I had to keep like Encyclopedia Britannica on top of the thing to keep him from pushing out because he was like, yeah, I was just, hey! I'm like, I still don't know. Yeah. Now, did, did your friends, is your friend that, that had the octopus? Now, did he say like he can pet it and stuff and then it's like kind of like a pet pet or is this just like a pet like a snake where it's like, I'm not gonna kill you, you're not gonna kill me, but you're mine. Like, it's I mean, he didn't really say that. He was just like, just don't let him get out, and he's really smart, and you know, whatever. But after that, he, like, he just, he didn't like me. Every time I came near the, <laughs> you, came, the you come into the, the office, and like, he's in that big leather bound evil chair, and he spins around. <laughs> <laughs> and then you try to reach for the door, and his tentacle goes, and it shuts the door. <laughs> Wow. But the best part was, like a few nights later, I, I woke up to the sound of him trying to get out again. And I, so I turned my bedside light on uh, and watched him, and he would sort of wedge himself into the corner, into this little ball, and then use his tentacles to like try to push on the thing, right? And I'm like, that's freaky! But of course he couldn't do it, because now it's all laid down, and the lid was laid down, uh, way down rather, so he just, he would end up pushing himself down with a boop, and then he would go from like red to deep blue. Every time I'd be like, damn it! Watching this thing curse in color. Oh my goodness. Well, whatever happens, curse in color. We. Come on, Laurie. What are you doing? Now he's he's the mayor of Sheboygan or something like that. <laughs> Weird animal stories. Well. If you guys have ever, how many people have been to an Asian uh, market, like supermarket, like a Vietnamese supermarket? Okay, so if you've been to a real one, you know that if the health inspector walks in there, they're shutting it down, right? You know what I'm talking about. Okay, very, very, like they're fish, it's like they have a normal sized fish tank, and, and the Asian's like, I bet we can put 450 fish in that tank. Like, we're really only still like four to be in there. You know what I'm talking about. If you're, if you walk into a store and there's a fish tank with 450 fish, you might be in a Vietnamese market. If you look down into a crate that should only hold 15 crabs, but there are 50, 
you might be in a Vietnamese market. And so that's what this type of place is. So I'm walking through the aisles, and, and of course we're Asian, and so we have uh, sauces for everything. And so I'm walking down the sauce aisle, I'm looking at the various soy sauces, because there's a difference. Kikoman's the best one. And so I'm looking down, and I see this speck on the floor, and I don't know what it is. And so um, I look at it, and it's a, it's a, it's a crawfish. And so it just, it's right there. And it's like, as I'm walking closer, it raises up its, you know, its little claws like this. And, uh, and so I was like, okay, well, um, I don't know what that means. Are you like hug or like kill? I don't know. So I go get a basket and I, and I try to scoop up the crawfish. And so he gets in the thing and I try to bring him back to his home. I always think, bring you back to your home. But then I thought like, no, it's overpopulated. It's like the town of Elysium where Matt Damon is. He wants to get out of there. And so, so I try to dump him in the thing and he's hanging on to the thing. He's going. And so then I just tell my mom, I go, well, mom, and he's like, this is a crawfish. And, and in, a, in a moment of, you know how when the Grinch had that one moment where like for a second, they're like, I'm gonna do something nice. Well, my mom was like, I'm gonna do something nice. And so um, she let me keep this crawfish. And so I was like, oh, no, I'll keep it. And so then I, I bring it home, because I had a fish tank, and I put it in the fish tank, and it's kind of the same thing. M morning came, and it's out of the tank and by the door. <laughs> and so, like, what, what is the deal? Like, we're giving you a home. What are you doing? You know how many people kill for a home like this? There's a guy in the back. I would. And so, um, brought his whole knife collection. And so, um, so I took the crawfish and I put him back in the fish tank and I put a shoebox on top so that he wouldn't push out. So I guess like I don't know. I don't know how. It, I I think it's because I didn't put the shoebox like right deliberately in the center. I just kind of set it up there because I'm thinking like it's a crawfish. Um, I wake up the next morning, the box has moved enough to where he is out again, and he's by the front door, but, but I slept in because it was Saturday, and it, the Friday night before is my marathon, I'm not out dating, I'm watching Mary Poppins and E.T. on rotation, but, um, and so, uh, the crawfish is by the door, and I think he was there a long time because he had gone to the high rise, the eternal high rise. Yeah, and so that was a weird animal story. Yeah. And he got away and you got postcards from him or something. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, I should have said that. <laughs> postcards? Yeah. <laughs> He's now vice president of the same that's town right. where Chewy is the mayor. That's right. <laughs> you need Tatum to write your material. Secretary. Really, really fast, awkward animal story since we have the Akitas. The first time we took them to Anime Central in Chicago, a Some of you were actually at the Akita panel at ASIN two years ago. We had a whole bunch of people because the dogs are cute, they're fluffy, they're funny. We're up front getting everything set up, and our guest handler comes walking through the front and he goes, You know, before we start, there's something about these dogs you probably don't know. Not only are they therapy dogs, they are drug sniffing dogs. <laughs> and some 20 year old kid who was on the floor in the front row grabbed his backpack, <laughs> swore more than J. Michael Tatum has this weekend, and bolted out the door. I have to say that I'm glad I've never owned anything that needs to live in an aquarium <laughs> or terrarium or, or whatnot. These smart little creatures getting out, I'd not be okay waking up and finding them on the door or the octopus in your face with the pencil. That's what I have. <laughs> and then it takes its other tentacle that's shushing you. <laughs> because you like it, you really do. But, um, we actually have a shared story that involves frogs in the spirit of things like Sorry, something like that, but not in the house. So I had just, uh, we were we were pretty much, you know, newly a couple and together, um, serious couple, newly serious couple. Anyway, so um, I'm staying at David's and, and we hear this, it sounded like ducks one night. Thinking, <laughs> oh, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> And it's in the middle of the night, 
And David jumps up and goes, it's the frogs. <laughs> what are, now for people that live in Louisiana and places that maybe find that is a beautiful sound to lull you to sleep. If you've ever heard, and I think like, you have. They Does it lull? Like they sound like ducks. They sound like ducks, don't they? Like, <laughs> it's awful. It's well, there is this. It's a annoying, not a white noise option on your app. But these frogs, this cacophony of frogs, this sound was so loud, you know, it could not be denied. David jumps out of bed. Apparently, he had heard it plenty of times, like, I've had it with the frogs. In <laughs> his boxer shorts. Out of the house to the next door neighbor's pool, which is the source of the problem. I'm sad to say, if anybody needs to shoot a horror film, we've got a pool for you. Because it looks like a bog. It is rainwater that has filled this pool. He offered to help the neighbor fix fix it, and he would dump chlorine tabs and then mosquito, I mean, just any kind of chemical in it. But next door is a bog. Rainwater, just in a pool, black. And right, come to our house for dinner. Yeah, what's on the menu? But, they what? They are a thing, and if anybody wants to come collect them next door any spring, you are more than welcome to it. But he jumped, the funny thing is, is it, it's starting to, to, was it storming? It was storming, and there was thunder and lightning. This guy, in the box of shorts, jumps out of the bed because he's had it, goes next door to the neighbor's pool, gets their strainer thingy, and just starts flinging frogs over the fence. <laughs> and to the And I, I did have that moment of, is he nuts? <laughs> no. He this man. And then I fell in love with him and totally married the guy. <laughs> he's the keeper. Right. He's the keeper and lightning out, and it's the frogs that are bothering. I just wanna, I wanna add one thing there. Um, boxers. I'm thinking boxer briefs. Just to let you try it, it's sexy. So especially when you're flicking frogs. Uh, it's my turn for the story, but the, the panel is up because of time, my bladder. So I just want to say one thing that if you're my interested in the, uh, if you're uh, 17 older, uh, the Erotic Western sh uh, fanfic show is tonight at 8 o'clock. At uh, 9.30 I'll do my signings then. I hope to see you all there. Oh.